Hi, this is Gary Worden, and I'm going to talk about recording finishes for races at Massapog Yacht Club. This presentation is not about the whole job of scoring. It focuses on capturing accurate race finish data. That can be hard enough. In this part, part one, we'll discuss ordinary club races for one design boats like Flying Scots and Pursuit races. In a separate video, part two, we will go over recording finishes for a big Massapog regatta. A great day of race committee work, setting up a great course and running great races can all be ruined if the scores are not properly recorded. And probably the single most frequent cause of messed up scoring is the person recording finishes trying to do too much of the scoring task as boats are crossing the finish line. I think it is useful to look at scoring as a two-part data task. Collecting and recording raw data is the first step. This is the prime directive of the finish boat. Processing the data into a meaningful finished product, i.e. race results, is a different task. It's often done separately from recording finishes, it's frequently done by other people, and it can involve a computer program. For ordinary club races, we usually have two people in the finished boat. The jobs are line sighter, this person calls out the numbers as boats cross the finish, and scribe, this person writes down the sail numbers in a column as they are called. Sometimes one person must perform both jobs. Now let's look at the MYC all-purpose score sheet for club racing. This form has space for three one design races and three pursuit races. If there are more races, multiple forms can be used. Besides the input areas for recording finish data, the right side of the form contains instructional information on pursuit race starting sequences. Also the back of the form has a list of regular sailors and their boat numbers. The area of the form for input, shown on this slide in shades of beige, is comprised of three main sections to be completed by the finish taker at different points in the racing day. One, the middle section for data on whoever shows up to race should be completed before racing begins. Two, the left section is used to record boat finishes for each race conducted. Three, the right section should be completed after or between the races and it contains the scores for each racer. In past years, the Flying Scots have had their own races on Sunday afternoons and they have joined in pursuit racing on Wednesday evenings. All of their boat classes have sailed together in pursuit races on Sunday afternoons and in the evenings on Wednesdays and Thursdays. During the pandemic, all club racing may be pursuit racing. The dedicated Flying Scott or other one design racing data may be entered at the bottom of the input area and pursuit racing data at the top of the all-purpose score sheet. If there are more than 20 pursuit racing participants and or there is no separate one design racing, the whole form may be devoted to pursuit racing. Let's look at the form more closely by walking through a fabricated example of a typical Sunday afternoon's racing. Before racing, general information about the racing day should be input along with a complete list of participants and their sale numbers. When recording a pursuit race, also enter boat class next to the skipper's name. During racing, the race committee finish boat must capture a record of what happens at the finish line. All score processing, resolution of all discrepancies, and answers to all questions rely on the capture of this basic information the raw data. What is required is simply a list of the sail number of each boat that crosses the finish line in order of its crossing. This list may even include boats that ultimately do not have a legitimate finish. For example, OCS boats or boats that cross the line twice. For a pursuit race, in addition to recording the sail numbers as they cross, the finish taker should enter the race's duration at the top of the column when the first finisher crosses the line. When boats cross the finish line one at a time with space between them, recording finishes is simple. If there are lots of boats or close finishes, the job is more challenging. Here are some of the tactics that can make the job easier. When calling and recording sail numbers, reduce long five or six digit numbers, particularly laser and sunfish numbers, to the last three digits. Make sure to check for duplicates before racing begins. Four digit numbers could be reduced to three as well, but I find it easy enough to break them into two two digit numbers when calling these finishes, like 4619 or 5613. 
Recognize that a challenging call is coming when a group of close finishers approaches the line. Have the scribe note the sale numbers of the coming group in the form's margins before the boats reach the finish. This way, the numbers will be on paper for reference if some of them are not clearly visible when they arrive at the finish line. If you can't see a sale number at the finish, the line sighter can use some other way to indicate to the scribe that a boat has crossed the line. Near boat, far boat is often used, but it could be anything, a color, the name of a sailor, mystery boat, anything to designate the crossing of another boat. The scribe should have a line on the score sheet for every boat that crosses, even if it is not immediately clearly identified. After the crowd passes, the team can look for boat numbers and along with call to finish order and any pre-finish notes taken, they can piece together which sail numbers belong in which finish order box. After racing is done, the scores can be entered in the right-hand input section. Go down the list of participants one at a time. For each boat, locate its finish orders in the left-hand section and write in the score for each race. If a boat is missing from the race's finishers list, assign DNS did not start or DNF did not finish as appropriate in the scoring box. DNS and DNF result in the same score, so it doesn't really matter which is entered. When you've entered the scores for every participant, your work recording the racing for the day is done. It's a very important part of the race committee's job. For information on recording finishes for a large regatta in NYC, check out the video for part two of this topic. Thank you for listening.